Hey everybody, this is Rick. I don't like mulch. Um, these were mulched beds. There's another mulch bed over there. At our last house, we had mulch beds. Every year I've got to get my trailer out, go get the mulch, bring it home, spread it. Not a big deal, but something to do extra and something to spend money on every single year. And around here now, they're even starting to do it a second time in the fall. Looks pretty, but that's, you know, I don't like the mulch. The big problem for me and what drove me to this point was, yeah, the mulch looks great the week you put it down. A couple weeks later, it's not looking so hot. Three weeks later, it doesn't look so great at all. The weeds grow in it. You got all kind of problems. But the big problem for me is the mulch constantly decomposes, turns to powder or dust. And this is downhill. Every time it rains, all the water that lands there beats on the mulch and the mulch just flows like a river across the sidewalk. This sidewalk, just like the one on my last house, was constantly covered in mulch. And if the mulch got too thin, now I'm exposing dirt and the dirt is eroding away. So I could never have a clean looking sidewalk. It always looked horrible clean it today get a rainstorm the next day and the constantly decomposing mulch is constantly washing across my sidewalk so what i decided to do was replace the mulch with rock this is called terra rock it's a bunch of little stones i love this stuff you put this down the right way that i'm going to tell you about one time and you're done forever it has worked fantastic for me like i said i did this at my last house 20 years ago we moved here about three years ago so from 20 years ago till 17 years later the mulch at my last house looked exactly as how i put it down 20 years ago it doesn't move it doesn't shift it doesn't decompose you never top it off it no more dirt running across the sidewalk. Like I said, this has been here for six months. I haven't cleaned anything. No more dirt ever. And that was the same case in my last house. 17 years later, it looked great, does not decompose. And I solved my dirt going across the sidewalk issue. Um, there's a lot of rock here. This was six cubic feet of rock. And I'll apologize for chopping in some photos here. Someday I've got to learn to edit these better. But I wanted you to see the photos that I did along the way. First thing for me was I have two downspouts. And they came across with black corrugated pipe that just sat on top of the mulch and looked even more hideous. And then it just dumped to a big open piece of pipe right here and there. It was ugly. So I knew I wanted to bury these. So I first naturally remove all the old mulch. Get your soil kind of leveled out, smoothed out. I extended my downspouts. So they go down to this adapter. It's underground into a black T. And make sure you keep your pitch for drainage. This is at least a quarter inch to the foot of drainage. And I installed, this is called a pop-up emitter. And what this does is when water builds up in those pipes, it lifts up. And it only lifts that far. It won't go any farther. So when it's open, it kind of regulates how much water can come out at one time. So I even don't get a flood right here. And then when it's done draining, it closes. I built a rock pit below it with fabric and cloth so that the water in the bottom of this elbow that's coming from here it has i drill holes in it and it slowly drains the rest of that water out love it it's worked beautifully absolutely beautifully some of the key points that i think were really important in doing this once doing it right i'm going to tell you about them now one don't skimp on anything you're doing here don't skimp this rock I put it down this is two and a half to three inches deep 
That's how thick this stuff is. You can see it kind of interlocks on itself. I can walk on it. It doesn't move. It's not going anywhere. The rain won't pick it up and wash it down the sidewalk, as you can see. But you have to put it down thick. You put it down thick so it stays. And first you put down landscape fabric. If you don't put down landscape fabric, the rock is slowly going to sink into the dirt. The dirt's going to come right up to the top and you're going to be looking at an ugly mess that you might already have. Um, the other benefit of the landscape fabric is you won't get any weeds. Um, with this here, there is no soil exposed for the weeds to grow into and all the weeds that are in your soil underneath the landscape fabric that were already there and that you might have to fight every single year, you won't see them. They will not come back. So that's another critical feature of the landscape fabric. With that in mind, if in your seams or anywhere else, if you leave bare dirt exposed, weeds are going to come up from there, chances are. So while you're doing this, just simply make sure that you don't have any exposed dirt. So with that said, when I did my fabric, I had it hanging over the edge of this sidewalk a good six or eight inches all the way down. And I had it to where it would go up that wall at least a couple inches. I went and bought very good quality landscape fabric from a landscape supply company and I'm real happy with it. The landscape fabric, like I said, stops. You put that on top of the dirt, soil, and then the rock starts going on top of that. So naturally first you get everything you're going to do leveled out, smoothed out, clean up any divots that you have, put the landscape fabric down. This is about 10 and a half feet wide. My landscape fabric was six inch wide roll. So I first put down landscape fabric strip here, and then I put down a second strip here. This is downhill for me. You want the landscape fabric, and when water hits that landscape fabric, you want it to flow. You want some overlap of your landscape fabric. And when that water flows, you want it to flow from one over top of the other one. You don't want this landscape fabric on top of this one because if you get some exposure under there and you get the freezing in the winter and the rocks will start to creep underneath that landscape fabric and they'll build and they'll build and they'll build and eventually you're going to start seeing that edge of the landscape fabric because it just keeps working its way up. So water comes in here, it flows over top of the piece that's here and that's one of the things to make sure you do so you don't have an issue. They still sell landscape pins. They, they look like U's. Um, you'll see them in the photo. I've spiked them every now and then. I moved them around if I needed to. When you cut the landscape fabric, don't skimp. All right, so get all your soil ready. As you prep your soil on this edge where your concrete is, see, Here's a weed trying to grow up. I just simply pick it out. There are no roots. It's done. This edge right here. I don't want rock coming up up here because then it's just going to constantly come across. So what I did is I dug down. Like I said, I put this, well, I put this rock down two to two and a half to three inches thick. I dug this down at this point two and a half to three inches down. I dug the soil away and either spread it out or moved it somewhere else. But from this point to where the bottom of that landscape fabric is going was two and a half to three inches. And I blended that all the way back as far as I needed to for my comfort. So with doing that, this rock right here, just like this rock here is two and a half to three inches thick, this point right here is two and a half to three inches thick. I'm never going to see my landscape fabric. 
In fact, if you really look close, there it is. That's how well I cut it. But going that deep, you're never gonna see the landscape fabric and the stone will never wash over top. Very important to me was getting this to where I can walk on this and the stone is not constantly coming over here like the dirt used to come over here. So to get a nice thick edge here and not see landscape fabric straight through it, I dug the soil down two and a half to three inches. Landscape fabric over top of it, start putting the rock down. All right, so I had six cubic yards of rock delivered. I would have all gotten it little by little with my trailer, but my local landscape supply mulch kind of company did not sell it. So I had to have it trucked in a little further away, but I did six cubic yards of it. What I did, like I said, this is all covered in landscape fabric. I hauled it from the driveway to this whole area, the whole place, hand carrying two five gallon buckets at a time of the rock. If I just, again, remember I said I had some excess landscape fabric kind of sitting here. If I just threw the rock here and kind of kicked it out with my foot or a rake, then chances are I didn't get it under that landscape fabric and I would see it. So again, what I did is, so what I did is I dumped one five gallon bucket here. With one hand, I held that landscape fabric up and then with the other hand, I tucked it up. I tucked it right up to there. And then I dumped another bucket and I scooped and another bucket and I scooped and another bucket and I scooped. Because my drainage goes that way and my fabric goes that way and that way, then I kind of did this area, went that way, and then kind of went kind of went that way out. And that worked really, really well. But because I had this, so now I had the rock nice and tight and I had a little bit of landscape fabric here exposed. All I did was pick it up with my fingertips, kind of pull it up a little bit. With the other hand, take a knife and I cut that landscape fabric right tight to that bottom to where as I push the rocks back, it laid down. And again, two and a half to three inches of rock on top of there. And again, because I took the time to do all of those things, you do not see any landscape fabric. There is not one inch of dirt exposed back here, so no weeds are ever gonna come up and through. Cutting around big monsters like this was a bit of a challenge. And what I did is I got this down, rock in place, held it in place with the, some of those landscape fabric spikes and rock. And I came this way with the fabric and I cut, I started, I cut a hole at the base of the crate myrtle, ran my hand up to it, and then I did have to cut a slot all the way across the fabric so I could manipulate the piece. And then I worked it around and I basically cut out a circle. So again, that landscape fabric is pretty tight up to the roots. And again, it, you know, it, it worked out superb. It really worked out well. When we got to these. This is our Lirio. Again, I did not want to have exposed dirt. Exposed dirt, I know, means weeds are coming through. So what I did is I came down here with the landscape fabric. I tucked it right up to here. And then I laid it over top. And then I cut an X. Cut right through it. So that left me a triangle and a bunch of triangles. And then what I did is just take that piece of landscape fabric and I cut it out, basically cut a circle. So the fabric tucks right up underneath it, bring the rock in by hand, come around here, cut the landscape fabric away, bring the rocks in by hand, tuck it all the way around, and then kept on rolling. It took a lot of time, but to me that's critical 
because again all these plants that are in here if there's dirt exposed around the outside I'm going to get weeds so as I kept on going I just kept going with the landscape fabric down made sure it was tucked under just like I tucked in the landscape fabric I held it up against the, the wall in the back scooted the rock back when I got down here I purposely left the landscape fabric hang over as much as I could at least six inches this This whole sidewalk was covered with landscape fabric. And again, after I got the rock in place where I wanted to, I just grabbed the fabric, lifted it up ever so slightly, and then I took my knife and just cut the fabric. So when it laid down in place, it would be as tight as possible against that sidewalk with absolutely no exposed dirt. And then I just hand carried my rock down, brushed it down, tamped it in place, and that really, really worked out well. I'm looking for a spot to see if I have. Yes, here's a spot. You can barely see the landscape fabric right here. That's how tight to the top I tried to get it. So again, that fabric starts here. It goes all the way up and there is no exposed dirt because it's super thick you don't ever see that landscape fabric i've got a pretty big pitch on the hill here it worked out well it's all tucked in i can walk on it it's awesome um, when i do get leaves on it from the trees in the fall now they just blow away with a leaf blower i don't have to worry about blowing up the mulch or blowing things away breaking it I just get the leaf blower out which I just did the other day and all the leaves just blow straight off of it so for me this was awesome it was a big job it's a lot more expensive than mulch but like I said I did it on my last house one time spent the money and then I never had to spend the money on mulch again I never had to spend the money on rock I never had to spend any time on making my beds look decent and nothing keeps coming across my driveway, driveway, sidewalk. And it really, really, really worked out well. So again, I hope this helps you. Be great if you clicked on the thumbs up like button and the subscribe button. And I hope this helps you. If it does, leave me a comment. I usually always respond. And um, thank you for watching. God bless. Have a great day.